Hey guys, it's Austin, and welcome back to my channel. Today I just wanted to sit down and show you guys some of my favorite products at the drugstore. Now I know that drugstore products can definitely be hit or miss, so I just wanted to sit down and show you guys products that I love and that work for me. Now I do have oily skin, so any of you guys that have anything other than oily skin, these products might not work for you. And I also want to give a disclaimer that just because that these products work for me does not mean that they will work for you and that everyone has different skin. So just because all of these products work on my skin does not mean that they will work on your skin. So with that being said, let's get right on into the video. I'm going to be starting off with primers, and the primer that I love from the drugstore is the Flower Beauty In Your Prime Hydrating Primer. Now I really love this primer because, again, it is super hydrating on the skin. Regardless of if you have oily or dry skin, I would definitely recommend hydrating your skin, whether that be in your skincare routine or with a hydrating primer like this. So I just took about two drops of primer, I'm going to be putting that all over the skin. I also really love this because it helps create a barrier over the skin and when you lay your foundation on top it'll help keep those oils from seeping through and ruining your makeup throughout the day and helping your makeup last longer. Now that we have all of the prep out of the way, let's get into some foundations. So the first foundation that I'm going to be talking about today is the Maybelline Superstay Foundation. This is literally my favorite drugstore foundation of all time and I even choose this over some of my higher end foundations as well. So if you're looking for a full coverage foundation that's going to last you all day, this is the product that I would recommend for you. I really love this foundation because it is super full coverage and it is also very lightweight on the skin. I also have two other foundations that I would like to mention as well. So the next foundation I'm going to be talking about is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. If you're someone that loves the glowy finish in a foundation or has more mature skin, then this is the foundation that I would recommend for you. This is one of my favorite foundations because this gives you that your skin but better look. This definitely has medium coverage, however I do feel like it is buildable and you could build it up to full coverage if you need. However, I find that using smaller amounts of this foundation, just because I feel like the luminosity of this foundation kind of helps cover everything up and tones everything down if that makes sense. And this also has SPF 18. And the last foundation I'm going to be talking about is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. Now this kind of goes hand in hand with the Flower Beauty foundation as well. It gives you the same glowy effect. I would also recommend this for mature skin as well, just like the Flower Beauty one. However, this one has SPF 20. So if you're basing it off SPF, I would definitely go with the CoverGirl one. If you're going off luminosity, I definitely feel like this one has more of a luminous glow than this one. However, they're very, very similar. The only thing I will say about the CoverGirl one is that it has a strong floral scent, and usually after you put foundations that do have fragrance on your skin, you kind of can't smell them throughout the day. That's not the case with this one. You can smell this foundation all day, and I mean all day, like from when you put it on to when you take it off, 8, 10, 12 hours later, so it don't matter. What I like to do is I like to mix these two foundations together, and that helps eliminate the floral scent throughout the day. And of course the foundation that I'm going to be applying today is the Maybelline Super State Foundation. And I'm in the shade 112 Natural Ivory if you are similar to my skin tone. I'm also going to be adding in a little bit of beauty oil as well to my foundation. This is the Rose Hip Seed Oil. I actually ordered this off Amazon, but I still wanted to talk about it because I pretty much mix this into it every foundation that I own, and I also use this in my skincare as well. It's pretty great. What this does is it adds a little more hydration into the foundations that you mix it into. So if you have foundations that are a little drying on your skin, I would definitely recommend picking up a beauty oil just to add in. Now I did mention that I like to use this in my skincare as well. This is the last step of my skincare routine, and what I do is I just take three or four drops of this and apply it all over the skin. This just adds some extra moisture to the skin, just like it does to the foundation. The reason why I use rosehip seed oil is because I do have acne prone skin and so when I get breakouts using this oil actually helps minimize scarring from breakouts and that's why I use it. So this is a really great product. I'll have it linked below as well as all of the other products in this video. So this is a great product. I would highly recommend picking up a beauty oil mainly for the convenience of working with foundations. However, you can also use it in your skincare. All right, so I just mixed together two pumps of the Super Stay Foundation and one drop of the Rosehip Seed Oil. And of course, I'm going to be going in with my Juno & Co Microfiber Velvet Sponge. I have a whole video of this. It'll be linked right here if you want more information about this as well. But this is super cheap. I'll have it linked below. It's like six bucks on the website. All right, so now let's get this foundation on the face. So now that we have that foundation all blended out, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the brow. And my favorite brow product from the drugstore is the Joa Brow Down To Me 
Precision Brow Pencil. And I use the shade Brunette. Now I really like this product because as you can see, it's very precise, it's retractable, and it also has a spoolie at the end to help comb everything through. I love this brow pencil because it's not too waxy. A lot of other drugstore brow products are super waxy and leave like a film through your brows. This one doesn't do that and that's why it's my favorite. However, I will have to say that it does dry out occasionally. If the tip isn't retracted back in to the brow pencil, it can dry out. So if you do pick up this product and yours does dry out, just break off the tip and it'll be good to go. Boo boo. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and fill in these brows. All right, so that's pretty much one brow all complete. I really, really love the shade of this brow pencil. Again, I have the shade Brunette. I also forgot to mention, but you can find this brand at CVS. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the other brow off camera, and I'll be right back to talk about some concealers. Now that we have our brows all filled in, we need to set those bitches in place so they are not gonna move all day. And what I like to use for that is the Maybelline Great Lash Mascara in the clear version of the mascara. Honestly, this does just as well as some of my higher-end brow products as far as gels go. However, I will say that obviously it does come in a mascara wand. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to scrape off every side of the wand just to make sure that you don't get all of that product in your brows because otherwise it'll look messy and clumpy and gross and no one wants that. So I'm just making sure that I have all the excess product off of the wand. I'm just going in and setting those brows. All right, one down. Now let's go ahead and do the other one. All right, that's the brows all set in place. Personally, I always like to set my eyebrows with brow gel just because it helps give that cut shape at the end. You know, your brow hairs can and will move around throughout the day, but if you set it with this, those bitches will not move. All right, now, we're on to some concealers. Okay, so I do have two concealers that I'm going to talk to you guys about today. The first one being the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Full Coverage Concealer. Now this concealer is super creamy underneath the eyes. It also gives an illuminating finish, just like the foundation that we talked about a little earlier in the video. I definitely think that the luminosity of this concealer is a great touch, especially when applied underneath the eyes because it helps pull in light to those dark circles and it helps cancel those dark circles out. I also love this because it's very weightless on the skin and it also doesn't emphasize any of my skin texture, so that's always great. The only downside I have for this concealer and honestly like Flower Beauty in general is we need more shades. I think there are literally six shades in this concealer and this is the lightest one. I do want to show you guys something. So I do want to kind of compare the lightest foundation to the lightest concealer and just show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so here is the lightest shade of the foundation. Again, this is L1. Now I'm going to go ahead and swatch the concealer for you guys right next to it. And this is the lightest shade of the concealer. It's hard to tell on camera because these are very similar to my skin tones anyway. And as you guys can see, the lightest concealer shade is actually darker than the lightest foundation shade. So I'm like, I don't make any sense. So across the board, I just feel like we need more shades in the concealer and the foundation because I truly, truly love the formula. The next concealer that I want to mention is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I love this concealer because it blends out beautifully under the eyes. Again, it also doesn't emphasize any skin texture as well, and this dries down to a matte finish. I have the shade Fair 02, and as you guys can see, it's almost white, but it's not quite there. I actually use this to lighten this concealer if needed. Sometimes it goes well with my foundations. Other times, like if I use it with the Flower Beauty one, I have to lighten it a little bit, so that's where this comes in handy. This blends out beautifully underneath the eyes, so I think I'm also going to pick up a deeper shade. That way I can cream contour with it as well. But for today, I'm going to be using the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer. I also love this concealer because it doesn't crease underneath the eyes throughout the day. Now let's blend that bitch out, okay? I actually like to blend out the under eyes last just because I feel like it adds a little bit more coverage when you let it sit and kind of dry out a little bit, but not really that much. Now that we have that concealer all blended out, I'm just going to go ahead and set it with my Maybelline Fit Me Loose Setting Powder, and I have the shade 05 Fair. 
really love this powder because it sets the concealer and foundation very nicely. You know, some powders look better underneath the skin than they do all over the face. However, for this one, I feel like it does a great job at doing both. So that's why I like to use this and that's why I would recommend it to you guys as well. Just because it's a universal powder as far as underneath the eyes and setting the face. Using a setting powder will definitely help increase the longevity of your makeup and make it last all day. It'll also help create another barrier to keep your oils from seeping through. So I'm going to take the flat edge of my microfiber Junoco sponge. I'm just going to dip it into a little bit of this powder that I have on the lid. Just got a little bit of powder on there. I'm just going to go right in and set underneath the eyes. However, before setting the eyes, you want to go ahead and make sure that there aren't any creases underneath the eyes. So what I like to do is I like to take my ring finger, look up, and just go underneath the eye and pat out any creases that may be there. Once you do that, just pick up your sponge and go right in with the powder. With any excess product, I'm going to go ahead and set the chin, the lip, and the forehead as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to take my ring finger, look up, pat out any of those creases that may be there, dip back into my powder, and go right underneath the eyes. Now I'm going to go ahead and set the face. I like to use a huge powder brush for this. This is the Morphe JH01. So I'm just going to tap into whatever I have in the lid, tap some off, and just go in and set that bitch. And again, this is really going to help increase the longevity of our makeup. Also find that setting your face with powder also helps everything blend on top afterwards. So any contouring, blush, highlight, anything like that will blend out a little easier rather than if it was just on the foundation without being set. Now it's time to start sculpting out the face. So for contour, I have the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contouring Palette, and this is the shade Dulce de Leche. I really like this contouring compact just because it has of course the contouring shade as well as a highlighting shade. Now I usually don't use this as a highlighting shade, what I actually use this for is to mix in to the darker shade just to help the shade work a little better with my skin tone, it is a little dark for me. So I like to mix these two together and then apply it on the face, which I'll show you guys in just a second. I also like to use the lighter highlight shade to help blend everything out if you go in a little heavy handed. So what I usually like to do is dip in two times on the contour shade and two times on the highlight shade. I would also like to mention that this formula is a little on the powdery side however it is super pigmented so be careful when going in because it's really easy to go in a little heavy-handed I'm just gonna go ahead and start carving out the cheekbones and I'm using the Morphe JH05 brush I also find that using stippling motions when blending out contour helps a lot easier than swiping motions because swiping motions can actually pick up any foundation underneath look at that like it's a pretty good shade for me now of course that is with both the highlight shade and the contour shade mixed together but this is what I find works best for my skin tone I'm also going to go ahead and bring this contour shade underneath the jawbone as well, and that'll kind of help it pop out a little bit. Alright, so now that we have the face all chiseled out, I'm going to go in with highlighter next. So the first highlighter I'm going to be talking about is the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek Highlighter in Flexitarian. Now, again, I know this isn't necessarily drugstore, however, it is drugstore price along with the concealer. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking a little bit on the finger. I'm just going to be laying that down in the highlight region. Yes, bitch. Look at that glow. It's just popping. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side as well. Just a little bit on the nose. And maybe the, the cupid's bow as well. If you're looking for a one swipe, super intense, wet highlighter look, this is the highlight that I would recommend for you. Now, I would like to mention that this does have a little bit of glitter as well, so if you're not really into glittery highlights, then I would definitely stay away from this one. Um, I usually like to put this down first and then layer other highlighters on top, which is what I'm going to be doing as well. The next highlighter I'm going to be talking about is the Milani Strobe Light in the shade Afterglow. 
This is a gorgeous champagne highlight that can be used as a subtle glow where you can also build it up to a super intense highlight. So that is why this one is my favorite from the drugstore. And the last highlighter I'm going to be talking about today is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder. This is definitely for more of the Instagram baddies out there. If you like a super intense highlight that you don't have to face tune on, this is the highlight for you, boo boo. Okay, all of the highlighters that I mentioned today, I really like them because they also don't emphasize any texture. I'm not sure what shade I have in this one, but it is the pink iridescent shade. And to layer on top of the ColourPop one that I already laid down, I'm actually going to be mixing both of these together and then putting it on the face. So for highlight today, I'm going to be taking my Morphe R36 brush, dipping into both of those highlighters, and going right over top the cream highlighter that we already laid down. <laughs> Beach. <laughs> oh, Kurt. Look at her. Now, any excess on the brush, I'm just going to be taking up into the brow bone as well. I'm going to go ahead and do this side as well. Yes, bitch. It's popping. Pop. Bin. And again, just doing the brow bone as well. Also going to take some on the nose and the cupid's bow as well. Any excess product on the brush, I'm just going to run a light tan right down the center of the forehead. This just kind of gives the illusion of a more dewy look on the skin, but it's actually highlight, so <laughs> joke's on you. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight the bridge of the nose, and for that I like to use a small bullet brush. And the brush I'm going to be using is the Morphe JH39 brush. So what I like to do is highlight the center of the nose bridge right underneath the brow bone, as well as all the way down the bridge as well. Now that we finished highlighting the face, I'm going to go ahead and go in with some blush. The first blush I'm going to be talking about is the Flower Beauty Flower Pots in the shade Sweet Pea. Now the shade is the perfect pinky shade of blush. These flower pots are not super pigmented, but they also blend out very, very easily on the skin. If you're someone that only needs one shade of blush, this is the shade that I would recommend for you. Next up, I have the Wet n Wild Color Icon Blush in the shade Pearlescent Pink. Now this blush is more of a shimmery blush. I really like this blush because it gives just the right amount of glow to the skin. My favorite thing to do is actually mixing both of these blushes together. You get the matte pink shade and the shimmery pink shade. So putting both of these blushes together just helps tone down the shimmer in the wet and mild one. So I just picked up both of those shades on the brush. I'm just going to apply that to the cheeks. I also really love applying my blush after contour and highlight just because I feel like it helps blend the highlight, the contour, and the blush all together to make it all look cohesive. And also if you're someone that likes a really carved out cheekbone, then I would definitely then I would definitely go in with this lighter highlight shade from the contour palette and just carve out that crease. Now I like to use more of an angled brush like this. This is the Morphe JH10 brush. So what I like to do is just go in with a little bit of powder on both sides and the tip and just carve that out right underneath the contour that you laid down. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side as well. I'm just going in with that big fluffy brush blending it all together just just makes it look not so harsh all right and there you go that bitch is cut out all right so now that we have all of our powder products on the face i'm gonna go ahead and set all of it so for that i like to use the flower beauty seal the deal long lasting setting spray look at this mist y'all look at this mist she's just she's so luxurious like ooh, i ain't ever had a spray like that it just feels like kisses on the face. That's the only way to describe it. Look at that shit. She just... This spray kind of reminds me of the misters at Six Flags, you know, when it's real hot outside and they have the little mister fans going. This is that shit in a bottle, let me tell you. This also sets powder products beautifully. When I first used this spray, I could actually see the powder products melt into the skin and like become cohesive with each other. And that was the first time that I had actually like visually saw it was with this setting spray. And this is awesome, like hands down, 
highly recommend. The one thing that I would like to mention is you have to shake this bitch up. Like, shake her up. Girl. Let me tell you, shake her up. If you don't shake her up, sometimes the product inside will separate and you'll get like little white dots when you spray it on your face. If you shake it up, that will not happen. So please shake it up if you get this product. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to lips. The first product I have is the Joa Mirror Mirror Lip Gloss. I really love using this gloss as kind of a prep before applying any lipstick or lip liner on top. I really find that this gives a super velvety feel on the lips. This also helps create an even surface on the lips, which means it is going to keep any lipsticks from going inside any of the cracks that you have on your lips. So that's why I'm mentioning this gloss first. And I also like to layer this on top of my lipsticks as well, and it looks beautiful. Next up, I have the Rimmel Thousand Kisses Lip Liner, and this is the shade Tiramisu. And I will have to say, this is my favorite lip liner ever. Like... This applies smooth and creamy on the lips, but it also dries down to a matte finish and it lasts all day. When ain't nothing left on the face, this will be here, okay? I also feel like the shade Tiramisu is literally the perfect nude color for any nude lip. Like, if you love a nude lip, you need this lip liner in your life, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and line the lips. Now that we have those lips lined, let's go ahead and move into lipstick. So I actually have two lipsticks that I'm going to be talking about today. These are the L'Oreal Color Reach lipsticks and the pink packaging. This is the shade 983 Upmost Taupe. And then the black packaging, this is Matte Stir Piece. M-A-T-T-E dash Stir Piece. Okay, Matte Stir Piece. And this is 802 is the color ID. These are hands down my favorite lipstick formula that I've ever tried. These go on super smooth on the lips and they're very pigmented as well, as well as have a pretty good lasting power as well for a lipstick. Now you definitely will be needing to take these lipsticks along with you as you will most likely have to touch up your lips throughout the day. Um, it does dry down a little bit, but it's not gonna dry all the way down completely matte. Also find that when you go in to touch up your lips, it layers very smoothly on top of the lipstick that has already dried down from previous applications. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these for you guys. So this is the shade Utmost Taupe. This is more of a brown nude. At first I didn't really think that I would be into more of brown nudes, but actually it turned out to be my favorite, so that's pretty cool. So that's more of a brown nude, that is Utmost Taupe. And then the second shade I have is Masterpiece. This is more of a pinky nude. These are very similar in tone, but, but this one is more pink, and Utmost Taupe is more brown, and you can kind of see that in the swatches as well. See? More brown, more pink. Of course, I'm going to be going in with the shade Utmost Taupe on my lips today. And again, hands down, this is by far my favorite lip combo that I've personally ever found. Lastly, we're going to be moving into some eye products. But first, I'm going to go ahead and prime the eyelids with the Flower Beauty Concealer. Applying any sort of base down before applying your shadows will definitely help with wear time of the shadows, as well as increase the pigmentation of the shadows. Now that we have that laid down, I'm just going to be going in with my sponge and blending that out. Now a lot of people like to set their eyes with powder. I personally do not like to set my eyelids with powder just because I feel like the shadows are more pigmented when you lay them down without setting the base. Now that we have our eyelids primed, let's go ahead and talk about some eyeshadows. And the eyeshadows I'm going to be talking about today are the Wet n Wild Color Icon Tin Pan Eyeshadows. These are by far my favorite drugstore eyeshadows. I really love them because they are super pigmented and they also blend out super, super nicely on the eyelids. I will say that the formula is a bit powdery, so beware of that. Like I said, the mattes blend out beautifully in these and the shimmers are amazing, let me tell you. And girl, if you spray those shimmers with a little bit of setting spray, they are popping. Let me tell you, they are so good. Highly, highly recommend these shadows. And the ones I have today, this is the Rose and the Air. And this one is not a basic peach. And girl, you literally cannot beat the price point of these eyeshadows. And if you're also not sure of what looks you want to do, they give you two options on the back of every palette as well. Today I'm going to be using just the Rose and the Air eyeshadow palette. I'm just going to be doing something super simple. So I'm going to be taking the transition shade, which is this light brown shade right here on top. And I'm going to be throwing that in the crease. So I like to start off placing these shadows in like the outer V. If you don't know where the outer V of it is, right at the edge of your eye, and you feel that little socket, that's called your outer 
V. Pack on that shadow in the outer V and then blend it forward through the crease. And then next I'm going to go ahead and dip into this dark chocolatey brown right here. And also throw that in the crease. Same thing that we just did. And with whatever is left on the brush, I'm going to start winging that up to the edge of the tip of my brow. I also like to take my shadows all the way up to the brow. I just feel like this gives a more open eye look. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Now that I have both of those shades laid down and blended out, I'm going to be going in with this shimmery copper shade right here, and I'm going to be layering that on the lid with my finger. Alright, nice little shimmery, cool toned eye look going on there. And lastly, I'm just going to be taking this darker brown shade and putting it in the lower lash line. Alright guys, that's the eye look all complete. If you're someone that loves to do winged eyeliner, this is the eyeliner that I would recommend for you. This is the NYX Epic Ink Liner. I really love this liner because it is a brush tip applicator rather than a belt tip applicator. And this makes things so, 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 so much easier when getting that sharp wing. So this is it's just a black shade. It dries down to a matte black. This is the only liner that I found from the drugstore that has a brush tip applicator. Um, I personally just find that it's a lot easier to use a brush tip applicator rather than a belt tip. This is also supposed to be a dupe for the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. Up next I have the LA Girl Glide On Gel Eyeliner in the shade Whiten. This is perfect for lining the waterline. It really opens up the eyes because it is a white shade. find that this is super creamy on application. It doesn't irritate my eyes and it lasts all day. And last but not least, I have the NYX Worth the Hype Mascara. This is an amazing everyday mascara. It volumizes, it lengthens, it's black, and it also doesn't flick throughout the day. Alright guys, that is all of my favorite drugstore products that I have for you today. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. I also have all of these products linked down below as well for you guys. And also stay tuned for my next video. It'll be all of my favorite high-end products.